Well, hello, everyone. We are happy to be back with you for FWCC's Topic of Light. My name is Denise, and this is Gloria Amber. And we are, we are here today to uh, bring the Word of God to you and to encourage you with stories of His grace and mercy. We're talking about peace. Again, we are in another uh, session about peace. Alexandra McLaren said, True peace comes not from the absence of trouble, but from the presence of God and will be deep and passing all understanding in the exact measure in which we live in and partake of the love of God. I just thought that was just so good. I thought that was so rich. Just think about that for a minute. Peace is not determined by the absence of trouble, but rather by the presence of God. Mm-hmm. You know, if I went out and I asked different people random what peace meant to them, I think most people would say the absence of trouble. When I have a day that everything is going good, or when, uh, you know, uh, all things, my, I, my, everything goes as planned, I don't have this problem or problemless. They might say the life without problems. That's what peace would be. But really, that's not at all what we're talking about or what this peace is. And we want to look today in Mark 4, 35 through 41. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Because there is a peace that is so aggressive that it can actually take hold of a storm and change the very atmosphere. And we know that because why? Everything we know would be found in the word of God, right? That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. Verse 37, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that if it was nearly swamped, Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drowned? And he got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. That must have been some big storm Mm -hmm. because these were disciples and (coughs) some of them were fishermen. And they'd been on the water many times and they had been in storms and waves and turbulent seas. It must have been a big one for them to be so afraid. However, at Jesus's rebuke, what happened? The wind and waves suddenly hushed and there was a complete calm. And I was thinking about what must have been more impactful to them. Their fear of the storm or the total hush and calm that came in because he spoke to it. So let's start today by talking a little bit about why do you think Jesus rebuked his disciples? He wanted them to believe. He wanted them to step up and do what he's doing because he's been teaching them. Mm Yeah. And when that word rebuke there, it doesn't mean shame on you, shame on you. He wasn't shaming them. He wasn't condemning them, but he was teaching them. He was instructing them, right? Right. Well, I think too, I think his expectation was, you've seen me. Mm -hmm. I I love this this part right here where it says they took him along just as he was Mm. in the boat. So how was Jesus? (laughs) He was full of peace. He was full of wisdom. He had purpose. He said, let's go to the other side of the lake. He intended for them to get to the other side of the lake. You've been watching me operate in all of these areas. I have taken, I mean, I am Lord. I have taken lordship over fish 
and loaves and sickness and disease and wind and this and that I am and I want you to learn who I am experientially because by the way you're about to step into this ministry right mm -hmm. and he has a short period of time and so I think I think he was so desirous of them to get it yes. get it don't you think he's desirous of us to yes. get it yes. when you lay yes. your hands on the sick they will recover mm -hmm. when you sow seeds believe that it's not going to return void that's what he right. says he's so desirous for them yeah. to get it mm -hmm. because he's looking for a steadiness in them so that he has he, he can have just more confidence that when he departs which he's going to do mm -hmm. in a short period of time He's going to depart that when he places this ministry into their hands, that it will move forward the way he intended for it to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think there's such a desire there to see that. Okay. And sometimes you're a little disappointed, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> I well, would, I'm disappointed in my kids sometimes when I've told them and told them and told them and showed them and showed them. Mm -hmm. And they do it a different way. And I'm thinking, come right. on. When come the on. way that would work was right. right there. Right. The way that would work. Right. Yeah. And there's power in the words that we speak, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because he spoke to the storm, and then it w was calm. Mm -hmm. So when we speak to storms in our lives, the Holy Spirit can give us words to speak. Sometimes, I know I've been in situations where I was crying and like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And then the Holy Spirit would give me a word to speak. And it was through that where I know it was him. Mm -hmm. I would speak it out, and then things would change. So yeah. it's just a blessing to know that there is power in our words and we have a choice as to what we speak. Also, we can't tame our own tongues. The Holy Spirit has to help us. Yeah. So yeah. I pray more, more than once a day usually, God, please guard my mouth and tongue. Help me speak what you want me to speak and nothing mm -hmm. else. Because yeah. it's very easy to get you know into fleshly situations where you want to say it another way mm -hmm. but if you could think about it every word that we speak can change a situation or bring life to somebody or you know mm -hmm. that there's so much power in the holy spirit praying in tongues and speaking his word mm -hmm. that we can speak words of life because the creator lives in us when we're born again mm -hmm. the creator lives in us and he spoke and he made the world he spoke in genesis it talks about he spoke and created mm -hmm. we can speak and create so either you're gonna speak and create life or you're gonna mm -hmm. um, speak death so god wants us to speak life and only the holy spirit can help us do that because we all are pressed sometimes and we want to say you know something else but when the lord gives you a word it's powerful. Like I was standing in faith for this lady for her her healing, and um, it's you know God. I just think so much more. God does not want to see people in pain. That's mm -hmm. what He took at the cross. He does not want people to be in pain. So He gives us compassion like Him. And so um, you know, I was just praying and I was listening to the Word and I was exercising. You know, getting my frustrations out. <laughs> and then the Holy Spirit gave me a scripture to stand on that He. Um, was setting her free of her infirmity so it's just a blessing to have the Lord because in those times where you're like we've done all we know to do and when I'm standing I'm standing I'm not moved but he needs us to stand firm because there's people around us wavering and I don't know what to do and they're scared and there's all these situations coming up in the world and the only peace that we'll have is within us mm -hmm. but he can give us you know the words to speak and we may not be saying it directly to them you could just yes. be praying for them and you're speaking it out in your own house words matter they're like containers you know like this cup of water it's full of water well not completely full but if i emptied it and i'm speaking words of death there's nothing in there so mm -hmm. it's better that we speak his word because there's power in his word there's power in the Holy Spirit and we don't want to give any place to demons or the devil into somebody's life sometimes situations happen and we don't know why it doesn't make sense don't let that keep you stuck in that you have to go forward I know some situations are so hard and heartbreaking but God can heal your heart and things don't always make sense a lot of things happen, we don't know why. I know the good things that happen is God. The bad things that happen is not God, it's the devil. We have to know that. 
because people are blaming God for things that he didn't do or situations and choices that say I've made that made me fall down and I'm blaming or I'm not blaming but some people are blaming God saying hey he you know he told me to do that and it wasn't God's will so you have to decipher which way you want to go you know like um, the rudder of the boat where it talks about in James our tongue can make you go this way or this way. So we want to speak words of life. And I try to always keep myself and my mind that way, even in the midst of, you know, a lot of different things going on. I try to ask the Lord, okay, God, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to say anything? Do you want me just to be quiet? What do you want me to do? And every time he comes through, you know, sometimes he'll tell me, just be still, don't say anything. Let me handle this. And sometimes he'll have me speak the word. And so um, just knowing, speaking the word, it doesn't return void. When you speak his word, some people think, oh yeah, I said it, nothing happened. Because they're not believing yet, they don't know. When we speak his word, it's happening. Regardless of what other people are saying, things going on, it's working. And we're empowering angels to go forth. We're empowering his word to go forth. And it is working. And that's faith. And that's what Jesus wanted us to have when, you know, he's teaching his disciples. He's teaching us through the Holy Spirit. As we're reading the word, he can teach you a specific word that will change your life forever. And I'm so thankful to have a relationship with God. And I hope that you will just grab this today and not take another second away from him. And just walk with him because it is there is life and he sustains us through everything through any situation going on he sustains us he's like this morning i was praying <coughs> he's so funny he put a song on my heart but it was that song um lean lean your head on my shoulder or what is that song where he's saying like lean your head on my shoulder so it's like i can just relax my head on his chest i can trust god that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's going to be with me. He's going to help me. He's going to show me what to do. He's going to help impossible situations be possible. But speaking his word, it is working. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's, That's good. very good. They were speaking death. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at what they said, they said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Their expectation was we're going down. We need help, mm -hmm. right? And the reason it was important that Jesus step in and speak life and calm everything down and speak life into the situation, safety into the situation, is because it, we are told before that that there were other boats with him. There were other, probably smaller boats, because the big fishing boat, those are pretty good sized boats. There were other boats with him. And so he was enlarging his tent pegs and being a covering for those smaller mm -hmm. boats that were also coming with them to the other side. So it's going to be important that we speak life because there are others that we that are in our prayer covering mm -hmm. that need that covering mm -hmm. because they don't know how to do it or maybe they're having some rocky moments that we just need to be steady saying the word believing god and knowing he's working because he wants to cover other areas more than we can ask or think yeah that's so good and you know a, a lot of all that is prompted by love Absolutely. Now, everything Jesus taught us, everything that he does for us, everything we receive in the word of God is out of the heart of love and which makes it possible. And we have the fruit of the spirit in us as believers. It's in us that love is in us. But I love knowing that we can help other people. As Amber was saying, as Gloria was talking about how when he spoke, other boats out there in the water they also were recipients mm -hmm. of that peace mm -hmm. and so we can share our peace with other people when we speak and other people are affected by that peace how grateful we are the prince of peace our lord and savior i am so grateful mm -hmm. i think about all his examples everything he shows us i think about the opportunity to walk with him and with other believers and i just want to say if you don't have a church home if you don't if you don't have a church home and you live in the las vegas or henderson area we'd like to invite you to come to our church we are over on patrick lane 
Um, you can find us in, if you're online, you'll already be able to find us in, in the address. But come and visit with us because we don't want you to walk through the storms of life and the things that are coming by yourself. We want you to have fellow believers that will walk through life with you. So be blessed today. Uh, we are grateful to be able to come into your home. We say peace, shalom, in Jesus' name. Amen.